Great Sheffield Flood was a flood that devastated parts of Sheffield, England on the 11th of March 1864 when the Dale Dyke Dam broke as its reservoir was being filled for the first time. At least 240 people died and more than 600 houses were damaged or destroyed by the flood. The immediate cause was a crack in the embankment, the cause of which was never determined. The dam's failure led to reforms in engineering practice, setting standards on specifics that needed to be met when constructing such large-scale structures. The dam was rebuilt in 1875. Sheffield is a subdivision of South Yorkshire, England. As the town industrialised, its population grew from 45,478 in 1801 to 185,157 in 1861. The rapid population growth resulted in greatly increased demand for water, which led to the construction of the Dale Dyke Dam for the purpose of providing a more efficient source of clean water. It was created by Sheffield Waterworks Company SWWC during the late 1850s. The company purchased land in the Loxley Valley to the north-west of the town on which to build a reservoir. By the 1860s the dam and its associated works had been passed as satisfactory and was allowed to fill with water. On the night of 11th of March 1864, assisted by a strong southern western gale, the newly built dam, known as the Dale Dyke Dam, in Bradfield Dale, near Low Bradfield, on the River Loxley, collapsed while it was being filled for the first time. An estimated 3 million cubic metres, 700 million imperial gallons of water, swept down the Loxley Valley, through Loxley Village, and onto Malian Bridge and Hillsborough where the River Loxley joins the River Don. The flood continued south down the Don into Sheffield Centre, around the eastward bend of the Don at Ladies Bridge, then to Attercliffe, past the sites of what later became Don Valley Stadium, Sheffield Arena and Meadow Hall Centre, and on to Rotherham. A wall of water moved swiftly down the valley, destroying everything in its course. The centre of town, situated on the hill to the south, escaped damage, but the densely populated districts of the Wicker around the new railway viaduct constructed by the Manchester, Sheffield and Lincolnshire Railway was completely destroyed. The Waterworks Company consultant engineer John Talton Leather was one of a family of worthy Yorkshire engineers who was involved in such work. His uncle, George Leather, had been responsible for the reservoirs around Leeds and Bradford, and one of these was the scene of a dramatic collapse in 1852 when 81 people died. John Leather and the resident engineer, John Gunson, were working closely together during the construction of the dam. Gunson was on site the night of the collapse and stated that there were a concerning crack in the outer slope of the embankment. Gunson convinced himself that the crack was not harmful, but still took the precaution of opening up the valves on the middle of the embankment to allow more water through. This failed to prevent the crack from worsening. The Mayor, Thomas Jessup, quickly set up a relief fund and help was provided for the homeless and needy. Sheffield was quickly supplied with aid whenever needed. The Mayor ordered a meeting for the purpose of considering and adopting such measures as may be deemed necessary to meet sufferings occasioned by this dreadful calamity, raising over £4,000. On the 18th of March 1864, the Mayor called for another meeting, but this time it was for anyone who could afford it to give up one day's wage to give to those in need. A relief committee was created and in total, over 42,000 was raised. The company denied any problems relating to their structure and design of the dam, and believed that the cause of the crack and the collapse involved a landslide or landslip. 
public perception informed by the coroner's court and the press so the collapse as due to a failure in the mode of construction of the dam. The professional inquiry was conducted and progressed to parliamentary investigations and institutional deliberations. The experts could not agree about the causes of the Dale Dyke collapse. They noticed that even with the cracks, the collapse of the whole dam was unforeseeable. The corporation had found two men who either were or were becoming president and then found five other engineers, all of who had already been or about to become presidents of the civils. They thought that on the basis of land slipping, they would pardon the Sheffield Waterworks Company from any carelessness and that the collapse of the Dale Dam was an unpredictable accident. They continued. We are moreover the opinion that all the arrangements made by your engineers were such as might have been reasonably expected to have proved sufficient for the purposes for which they were intended and that if the ground beneath the bank had not moved the work would have been safe and as perfect as the other five or six large reservoirs of the companies which have so long supplied the town of Sheffield and the rivers Rivlin, Loxley and Don with water. As for the physical damage in Sheffield and all the nearby areas hit by this short space of time, 238 people died and some 700 animals were drowned, 130 buildings were destroyed and 500 partially damaged. 15 bridges were swept away and 6 others badly damaged. The engineering profession at this time posed a weekly magazine. The engineer that provided both an excellent contribution to the technical press and a platform of public relations. An editorial headed the Bradfield Reservoir on the 18th of March 1864 reflected the anxiety of the moment. Its fall, coupled with that of the failure of the Home Firth Reservoir, show that the practice of civil engineering is far from what it should be that the forthcoming investigation will be the most searching character, there can be no doubt. A fortnight later, under the same title, it went on. The broken dam was constructed much according to the ordinary practice in such works. It failed nonetheless. That the Bradfield Dam was limitably defective, no one could doubt. The Bradfield catastrophe, in its way, is a useful warning to the whole profession. The claims for damages formed one of the largest insurance claims in the Victorian period. The collapse of the Dale Dyke Dam led to reforms in engineering practice. The court criticised the design and the construction of the dam. They focused on things such as the placing of outlet pipes, the puddle wall thickness, the method by which the embankment had been built up from, railway tip wagons, the inadequacy of the overflow arrangements and the practice of the removing spoil from the embankment from the area to be flooded. This then set standards on specifics that needed to be met when constructing such large scale structures as the Dale Dyke Dam. The Dale Dyke Dam was eventually rebuilt in 1875 but on a smaller scale. As for John Gunson, most of the blame fell on him although the company recognised his loyalty to be retaining him in its service until he had died in 1886. The government started a board of inundation commissioners to pass judgment for the compensation claims against the waterworks. They also arbitrated 7,500 claims for the loss of life and property which totaled to 455,000. All but 650 claims were settled without recourse to the arbitration process, but those 650 claims took almost six months to process. The claims registers record the claimant, their marital status and address, as well as details of the claim and the outcome of the amount awarded in compensation. They provide a unique insight into mid-Victorian Sheffield trade and industry 
with claims listed for stock, tools and premises, damaged and lost. The claims for furniture, clothes, books, toys and household utensils and goods help build up a picture of workers' lives at the time. A flood memorial stone marks the site of the original dam wall and footprints to explore the area. March 2014 saw the 150th anniversary of the disaster. Events took place to commemorate the occasion, including an illustrated talk and an exhibition at Low Bradfield Village Hall. Guided walks to the dam, memorial services, and both St Nichols, High Bradfield and St Polycarps, Mailing Bridge, and a public talk at the University of Sheffield by the Institution of Civil Engineers and the British Dam Society. A commemorative tankard and plate were produced by the Bradfield Historical Society and the Bradfield Brewery produced a special flood beer known as Damn It. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Look out for Josh Empire also on YouTube. Follow us on Facebook. Also find us on Instagram and look for Steel City Explorers and Josh Photography. And also please donate to PayPal to help with our explores.